Hello again and welcome to another War 40 k Imperial Guard video and before we get into today's video I'd like to say a huge thank you to Cameron Lincoln for sending in an awesome picture of his Tanith first and only army. Really really cool army, beautifully laid out, you've even got Saint Sabbath there as well which is fantastic and then you've got the big old straight silver bayonet, the commissar hat, all the artwork, it's all just really really cool so massive thank you for sending this picture in Cameron. If everyone else has got any cool pictures want to use in my videos then please post them on my facebook page or you can email them to me at morningglorytv at gmail.com and don't worry if you're an ogre and you've not had his bonehead surgery yet because there'll be links and emails down in the description below but without further ado let's crack on with today's video so today guys i want to do something a little bit different have a little bit of fun with this video and i want to talk about the vanquisher cannon and specifically I want to talk about how can we fix the Vanquisher Cannon. Now, if you're a new guy player, you may not have ever heard of the Vanquisher Cannon, which is a real shame because it's one of the coolest weapons that the guard have ever been given. And essentially, guys, it is a dedicated anti-tank battle cannon for the Lehman Russ battle tank. Now, it's a longer barreled variant, and the reason you never see it anymore, despite the fact that it, I think it looks cooler than any of the other variants out there, I think the Marshall can look a little chody, the Battle Cannon can look a little stubby, I think the Vanquish Cannon really encapsulates a proper long barreled sort of rifled kind of big cannon for the tank. But it reminds me a little bit about the Challenger 2, like big cannon, that kind of thing. Something you're likely to see on a more modern day main battle tank, it just looks really, really cool. And it's a shame that you never see them on the battlefield because their rules suck. Okay, and they really do suck. They fire one shot and it's basically a melter gun. Okay, it's strength eight, it's like AP three or AP four. I don't even know that it's so bad, I don't know the stats off my head. I just know that it's like not worth taking over something like a Dimash can. And that's a real shame because I think the Banksha can in the past has been a really good variant and now it's kind of suffering and that's just bad and it's been bad for a long time. So if I could snap my fingers and make a wish and change the Vanquisher Cannon, this is how I would do it. Okay, now the first thing to do before we actually talk about the changes is we need to understand the weapon that we're talking about. Now, some people may or may not know this, but the Vanquisher Cannon has been around for a long time and its fluff has been around for a long time as well. And basically, guys, Vanquisher Cannons are incredibly rare. And the reason they're incredibly rare is because in the Imperium, there was one Forge World that could make Vanquisher Cannons. That's right, guys. In the whole of the Imperium, there's this one foot that can make them. And it was lost. It was lost. So these things were already incredibly rare because they could only be produced on this one planet. And the reason they could only be produced on this one planet is the fragment of the STC to make them was on this planet. And the Mechanicus, you know, they jealously guard their secrets so they didn't want to share it. Then the Forge World fell. So now there are no more true pure Vanquisher cannons that are being made. Now there are some copies that, that some Ford was trying to make but they're not as good and they, there's some alternatives like that's why the guards started producing things like the Lehman Russ Annihilator, that's the twin last kind of variant they used to be able to get from Forge World and the reason that existed was because the guard were like, what well, in the fluff, they were like, we need something that can do something as good as anti-tank as a Vanquisher cannon. We can't produce any more Vanquisher cannons so we might as well joy rig some annihilators and then they ended up getting produced because they were somewhat able to bridge the gap but it was not the same as having a true Vanquisher cannon. So these things are incredibly rare but they were really powerful. I mean to give you an idea of how powerful they were despite the fact there was only one four tools that was able to produce these things and that they were already very rare in the Imperium. When the Imperium lost the ability to produce even the small number of Vanquisher cannons that they could produce the guard felt it hard. That gives you an idea of how good these weapons were, right? And so what we need, now that we understand the fluff for the Vanquisher Cannon, what we need is a weapon that is representative of that powerfulness, but that rarity. And so what I propose is, so this is going to sound crazy at first, but hear me out. What I propose is that the Vanquisher Cannon can be only taken on tank commanders okay you shouldn't be able to put back only the best crews only the best tank aces are given vanquisher cannons you shouldn't be able to give it to any old tom dick and harry right so firstly it needs to be limited to tank commanders now i'm even happy to limit it to like one tank commander in your army Something crazy like that. Now, I know that there's when the guard, the new guard comes out, inevitably they're going to limit one tank commander per detachment. So what I'm saying is, when it comes to Vanquisher cannons, maybe even taking that a step further. At the very least, 
limit it to tank commanders only. If you really want to make this thing super powerful, then limit it to one tank commander in your army gets a Vanquisher cannon. Okay, to re it's, like, it's almost like it's almost like a relic, but it's not a relic. You know, it's just it's very very powerful. Okay, it's just a, a very limited weapon option that you can take in your army. Okay, maybe you could even have it as something like what. Uh, you see in some of the newer codexes where you can take a battle cannon and then for like a character, you know, and then pay like 15 points more and you make it like a, a special relic battle cannon. Really, it's a Vanquisher cannon, right? You, you guys get what I'm saying. Basically, make it rare, okay? Make it very limited. And now that you've made it very limited, make it really, really powerful. Because it doesn't matter if it's only able to be taken in like ones or twos or at most three in an army. But realistically, the way CP has changed, you know, you're only going to be taken. And if, if tank commands get limited to one per detachment, you're only going to see like two of these things. So maybe you don't need to limit it to like one per arm. But the point is like, you guys get what I'm saying is make it rare. Okay, make it so that only tank commanders can take it. Only the best tank aces can take it. And then what you need to do is really layer on some buffs. So firstly... To represent the fact that this thing is an incredibly good anti-tank weapon that is only given to the best crews. Not just, not even just tank commanders, but the best tank commanders, okay? Any vehicle that has a Vanquisher cannon should get an inbuilt plus one ballistic skill, okay? An inbuilt plus one ballistic skill. Now, the reason you want to do that is because you want to be able... If this thing's only going to fire like once or twice every turn, then you need it to be able to hit. You can't have a Vanquisher cannon because apparently there's a rumor going around that guard tank commanders are going to get go down for ballistic skill three to ballistic skill four. That's really bad. But if you have, if that does, even if that doesn't happen, you know, you want your tank commander hitting on like a two with a Vanquisher cannon. Okay, it's one shot. It, if it really needs to hit, okay, especially if you're limiting other things around it, you should limit this. Yes, it's one shot, but it's very very good and it it's gonna hit. Okay, if you make it just one shot and it only hits on a four then that's dog shit, right? It needs to be, if it's only going to fire one shot, then it needs to make sure that that shot hits. Okay, so it has an inbuilt ballistic skill of plus one, so either it means tank commanders stay at a three plus and then they go to a two plus, or if tank commanders get nerfed down to a four plus, it means they go back to three plus when they're using a Vanquisher cannon, okay? So that's the first thing that you need to do. Make it representative that the best marksmen get this weapon, okay? So next, what you need to do is you need to talk about the damage output of this weapon. Now, what the Vanquisher Cannon needs to be able to do is it needs to be able in, to statistically, every turn, be able to uh, basically be guaranteed to kill one medium to heavy vehicle every turn. That's statistically what it needs to be able to do. If it hits you, it's got enough and it wounds you. It has enough damage, it has enough wounds, however you want to dole that out, GW. If you want to make it do mortal wounds in addition like the railgun, I don't mind. If you just want to give like a flat damage 12, I don't care, alright? The point is, is that this thing needs to just have the ability to statistically be able to pick up any medium to heavy vehicle in the game. Now, what do I mean by medium to heavy vehicle? And, and monster, medium to heavy monster as well. So, I would class a medium vehicle as something like if you look at a classic unit, it's a bit out of date now, but a classic unit, something like a Space Marine Predator, okay? Something that's got, you know, 11 wounds, toughness 7, 3 plus 8, something like that, okay? A heavy, and I would class a heavy vehicle as something like the Lehman Russ, and that's got like a 2 plus save and 12 wounds and toughness 8. It needs to be able to kill any of those. You need to be able to fire a Vanquisher Cannon at a Dreadnought, the Dreadnought dies. It just disappears. If you fire at an APC or a transport, it dies. It disappears. These are light vehicles. They just need to be utterly annihilated by this thing. Okay? If you shoot it at a medium tank, it's gone. Okay? This thing is going to put a round through the front of a Predator and out of the back of it. Alright? That's the power this thing needs to have. You need to be able to fire around. You need to be able to take a Lehman Vanquisher and fire at a regular Lehman Russ and just one shot it. Guaranteed every single turn. This thing should be able to cut a knight in half. Now, not, I don't mean like physically cut it half and one shot a knight. What I mean is if a knight's got about 24 wounds, this thing should be able to slot half the wounds of a knight in a turn, okay? Like if it hits, it wounds, it does it. It doesn't matter what defensive buffs it's got, it does it, okay? That's the statistical guarantee you need to give me. Now, some people are gonna say, MG, that's broken, that's super powerful, 
that would mean over the course of a game, one of these weapons could pick up like six dreadnoughts. And it's like, yeah, okay, that does sound powerful. But bear in mind what I said before. You're limiting this to potentially, as you're limiting it as much as potentially to one per army. Okay? And secondly, we're talking about this thing being able to statistically pick up one of these vehicles every turn on something like Planet Bowling Ball, okay, where it's flat, no terrain or anything like that. There are always going to be things that a savvy opponent can do to deny that. There's inbuilt minus ones. There's terrain. If you hit fire through dense terrain, this thing still gets a minus one to hit, right? You know, you still got the, the, the simple fact that this thing is useless as, against infantry. It's going to slot one tank or it's going to evaporate maybe like one or two incestors. Maybe if you go down the, like the mortal wound route like the uh, hammerhead, then, you know, it kills an infantry guy and does some mortal wounds but kills another one. Maybe at best that's what it's going to be doing. But realistically, this thing is super specialized at just absolutely slotting anything from like a Turvigon to a Lehman Russ and it's just going to chop in half a fucking knight. Okay, that's what it needs to do. But if you fire into a bunch of like Termaguns, it's going to go like two or three of them. That's it. Make it specialized, but make it really, really powerful. Make it really powerful, but make it really limited. So someone can't just turn up with like seven or eight of these things. The problem with guards, if you hand it out to everyone, one guard player, probably me, is going to turn up with like nine of the fucking things and just table my opponents in like two turns. Okay, but the other thing you've got to mention, uh, you've got to remember, is that terrain is a really, really big thing in 40k at the moment. And so, what you'll find is like, yeah, if this thing sees you, it kills you. But if it can't see you, it can't kill you. So if you're able to hop from cover to cover, and you're able to just take advantage of really terrain-heavy boards and use that terrain to your advantage, then the bank is going to start suffering. And maybe, realistically. You know, it actually only can kill like three vehicles, which isn't that a big a deal. I mean, because if your opponent just doesn't bring big vehicles for this thing to kill, then it doesn't earn its points back. Imagine if this thing goes along and just kills like three rhinos in a game. That's, not, that's nothing. You don't care about that. You know, it doesn't do anything. Bear in mind also, it's limited to being able to good in one phase. So... There's, you, you can make something mega, mega powerful. You can make this almost be like a micro shadow sword cannon. Do you know what I mean? Like you can make it really, really good and it doesn't break the game because you put some other limiting factors around it and on it. And you, there's always the fact that a savvy opponent can play against its strengths, you know, play up to its weaknesses. So that's what I would do to fix the Vanquisher cannon. But what would you do to fix the Vanquisher Cannon? What would you do to make one of the greatest anti-tank weapons that you can take on a main battle tank be worth it? Let me know down in the comment section below. Now, if you've enjoyed today's video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe and leaving a comment. Total transparency with you guys. Any extra interactivity you can give this video gives it a massive boost, which is really, really helpful to me. As this is my full-time gig now, so I'm just going to be open with you guys. If you can give it some extra interactivity, I'll be really, really grateful because it gives the video a big old boost. All praise the all-knowing yet mysterious YouTube algorithm. Now, if you've really enjoyed today's video and you want to see more content like this, you want to see me fix some more units, some more weapon options, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It's thanks to the very generous support of my channel members and of my Patreons that I can do this gig full time. So massive thank you to all of those. And I just want to do some shout outs to the latest channel members and Patreon supporters. So massive thank you to Skulldops, Golden Dragon Games, Jezza Shredder, Alex, Commander Baneblade, Colton Long, Friendly Neighborhood Sunwheel, Bill Sullivan, Star Captain 007, Mitchell Bodru, and Carl Heinz Manecki. Massive thank you to all of these people for signing up and becoming channel members and for doing their part. I also want to say thank you to the latest Patreon supporters as well. So massive thank you to Peter Leonard, Cameron Lincoln, Jamie Crecken, Nicholas Lewis, Alexi Menza and Navy Veteran. Massive thank you to all of you guys for supporting me on Patreon. And I also, before we go, want to say a personal, heartfelt thank you to my top tier Patreon supporters. These are the people that are signed up at the War Master level and have gone above and beyond the Call of Duty when it comes to supporting the Morning Glory channel. So massive thank you to Navy Veteran, Alex Dengal, John Stubbs, Nicholas Walsh, Swordfish Trombone, 
Diesel Fox, Ross Miller, Tom Sutton, and August Varney. Massive thank you, guys. You know how much your support means to me, and just, it's amazing, guys. Your generosity, it's, frankly, it's just, it's quite humbling and mind-blowing. You guys know I feel like that, but I just like saying it every time because it's true. So, massive thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. But that's all we've got time for today. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll see you guys next time.